Hey everybody, welcome back. And uh, I got a lot of flack from you guys about uh, spending way too much time going through the stuff that's in the toolbox rather than actually redoing the toolbox. So apologize for that. I thought it would be kind of cool to go through some nostalgia stuff, but I guess that was uh, just cool to me, I guess. Um, so let's just jump right in it. Forget all the pretense and let's do it. So uh, first off, uh, the box was pretty rusty and a lot of surface rust, top and bottom. Uh, a lot of it on the bottom, mostly just because it was sitting uh, in uh, Missouri for the most part, because it's a lot, you know, it's a fair amount of uh, uh, humidity and stuff, so it's pretty, uh, mo a lot of moisture there, so sitting on the ground didn't really help. Um, so what I have been doing, close to the top here, so I'll smash my fingers. Uh, what I have been doing is I have been getting rid of the surface rust, and you can see that it's done some fair amount of pitting uh, inside here. And uh, now I've, I've tried a number of tools, so let me show you what I've tried. Uh, I have tried a uh, wire wheel brush. I have tried regular, this is a, I think this is 40 grit sandpaper because this stuff was pretty nasty on here. I've also tried one of these drill attached paint removers and limited success there. And I've also tried kind of a hand uh, electric sander. Uh, with some limited success, but frankly the best thing that worked for it has been this uh, I, I put this on my impact gun Has really been the best because it get a lot of torque and I can really get in there and you can see from what I've been doing That it's been getting in there, but again the paint is or the metal is fairly pitted now If this was a car and I was taking a lot of time and I wasn't worried about it You know I was worried about it getting beat up or something I would really take the time and I would fill this in and make it look Super pretty, but remember, this is a toolbox, and it's meant to be used, so what I've done is uh, I've, I've planned on just kind of, you know, roughing it up, making it good, make sure the slides work well, uh, back and forth, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to pull these out and make sure that they work well, uh, and the plan is, is then to take uh, these guys here, I'm going to take the this part off, I'm going to run it, I have a sandblaster, over there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to blast these. I'm going to blast the front part of all the drawers and just clean up the inside of the drawers because if we look at the inside of the drawers, they're not too bad. I'll just clean them up, hit them with some uh, simple green or something and, and do that. And then the plan for the box is, is I found uh, some self-etching primer. So I'm going to prime it outside of the box first. Uh, this is the closest, you know, kind of Rust-Oleum enamel that I found for the red. Uh, that's as close as I could find, so I'm just going to hit the outside of it. Uh, I might, I think this is the right one, 7564 I think is the correct number for it. I don't know, the, the lid is a bit misleading. But here's the part where I found, because the box itself is this kind of blue-gray, blue, you know, it's this machine bluish-gray. And this is the closest thing I found, it's Rust-Oleum's. Uh, hammered look so it's got a little bit of a texture to it which if you look at the box has a texture to it already uh, and that's kind of the plan uh, so I'll hit it I got I got like four cans of this and I'll hit it pretty heavy with this this is the uh, light blue part number 721 2830 and it should be pretty darn close for what I'm doing and give it a good texture uh, so let's go through some of that stuff. You'll see the process as we go and hopefully it's a lot less fluff this time.
So this just kind of shows you a little bit of progress. Like I said, I'm not going to take this down all the way, just kind of get the high spot so you saw what I did in the blasting cabinet. Uh, here's what it looks like out of the blasting cabinet. It's a lot better. Uh, this will look better with paint, but here is the old version. And this is what, what it used to look like. So it's going to look, I say, a lot better. Still has a little bit of a, the sandblasting gave a little bit of a texture uh, to it, so uh, this metal might need just a just a little bit of finish just to get just to knock off that little bit of sparkliness that's on there. So here is uh, next step was going to be uh, the handles. I threw them through the blaster, and here's what one looks like uh, out of the blaster. It's a lot better. It's got some texture to it. Cause I think I'm using a fairly aggressive uh, compound to shoot to blast it, but Look at the two difference, and I'd say that's uh, that's quite a difference. This will take some paint. I'll I'll throw some nice uh, you know silver or just re whatever regular old paint that I have. Uh, but uh, heck of a difference between the two. This will make a nice little touch, I think. Now to get a decent uh, paint job on all of this, I want to remove this key, and thankfully it's held on by this clip uh, from the inside. So I just pulled that out. And uh, the, the key itself will, will pull right out as well from here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll uh, remove that tab. But also, uh, to make it a little bit even cleaner install, what I'm going to do is I want to remove this Craftsman logo. And on the inside of there are just two little push retainer clips uh, on the inside there. And all I have to do is just pull those out. So I'm going to pull those out. And then I will also give this a good cleaning and give uh, this, this handle a good cleaning. As you can tell, I'm just piling up drawers to, to get started. All right, folks, I'm going to call this about the halfway portion. Uh, I've got a good chunk of this stripped down. There's, you know, it's been a real challenge, let me show you, uh, to get in here and get all the rust out. There's still a, a fair amount I want to get done. But let me give you a kind of a rundown of the plan. I've got a lot of it done. Uh, a little bit I got to take off here. Uh, let's give you the, the full tour. Got a good chunk of the back stripped down to where it'll accept some primer. Uh, I've got the top also taken care of. And I do want to kind of point out that uh, I don't, I'm not, this is a toolbox, right? This is not going to be a showpiece. The idea is not to make this you know, 100% brand new again. So I'm going to leave the interior of this done. I'm gonna, I'll just clean it up uh, and make it nice. Uh, so at least there's just not junk in it. But I mean, this this old stuff is pretty cool. So I want to keep it. Uh, I'll probably clean up the hinges a tad. But uh, this is pretty much the way it's going to be uh, as far as the interior concerned. Uh, the uh, these are getting ready to be blasted. I've blasted all of the kind of accessory pieces. I had a bit of an oops where I was taking the Craftsman logo off and it snapped off the little pins. So it's going to have to be taped on uh, there. It goes here. It's going to have to be taped on. So sorry about that. Uh, but I will get some spray paint and test it out. And I'm going to test out my red one on my test uh, drawer here so the red uh, is accurate or at least close. And the hammer that my grandfather had in here, uh, as you can see, ooh. Yeah, didn't it's seen better days, and this is the hammer I've been using to uh, take off some of the hardware. But this is the halfway point of things. I still have to work on the larger drawers, which are down there. That mo those might have to be by hand because they don't think they're going to fit in the blasting cabinet. Uh, but this is the halfway point. I need a sandwich. If I'm going to go this far. I might as well do the little bolts that hold the handles on. So might as well.
I'm on to the painting section and I just wanted to kind of show you this as a proof of concept while so I painted this just to see if I like the color uh, and so the color that I used the enamel which happens to be the red color that I showed you earlier uh, paint number 7564 uh, in the Rust-Oleum high performance enamel line uh, I just want to show you that, you know, this came straight out of the blaster and then, you know, wiped it down and then painted it. And then I, this one was uh, using the primer. So, I mean, just kind of, I'm just saying this to highlight the, the importance of uh, priming first and not priming. See what happens. You get all the splotches and stuff, whereas opposed to the primer starts filling in all the little gaps. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting the big one while I wait for my primer to finish and I will spray this with red and show you the difference. Okay, so this stuff says you do not need to do a primer coat on it, so I'm just going to do it as an experiment. And remember, you want to do kind of light, even coats in the beginning, right? So nothing too thick. If you can still see the material through it, you're probably on the right path of not being too thick because you don't want runs. And I did a little bit thicker on the backs. Okay, so I'm, I'm liking this coat the way it is. I'm going to let it dry. Uh, but I did a little bit on the back here, and so I'm going to do, do a second coat. And looking at the color, I'm thinking the color is going to be pretty close to what I'm looking for to give it kind of that factory, kind of original blue tint to it. So I'm going to continue painting, and I'll come back, and I'll have everything painted and we'll put everything back together. So we have a number of the small ones, small drawers here in primer. This one is an experiment to see how much paint I need versus how much primer. So that's just helping me out with the enamel, uh, enameling process. And then we've got kind of the rest of them just kind of waiting here to dry. I've got one more smaller one that I got to do and then I'll put it back together. And then I've got to work on the big ones. I'm really just not looking forward to it, frankly. So I finished a second kind of thicker coat all the way around this and this is kind of a good angle for you to see uh, the, the dimpling that's in this paint. It's called the hammered look and it kind of looks like how it originally came that had this you know kind of wavy scalloped uh, look to it and I like it and the color is pretty darn close. You know it's, you know, it's, it's never going to be a perfect match but it's going to be it's going to be darn close, so I like it. I like that. A lot, of, a lot of good depth and texture to it. It looks rough, you know. It's a toolbox. So they're supposed to be tough. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start putting this bad boy back together. All right, this might be a tad loud. Hold on. Uh, heck of a lot better than it did before. So, so far, success. This is looking pretty, pretty good. A lot better compared to those dirty things. All right, so got uh, everything uh, kind of reassembled. I still got a couple of these drawers that are drying, and I'll finish that up in a second, but I want to take a look at it. She's looking really good, and uh, what I did is I went ahead and painted this with a silver paint, uh, did this with an enamel so that it uh, matches very similar to the red that's in there, cleaned up the inside of them, and I'm just going to slide them back in. Uh, I will say a note, uh, these sliders are not greased and they're not ball bearings. Uh, these are just regular sliders, so what I did is I took these out, there's a little pin on the inside, you pull it out, and these things slide out, and I just took a wire brush and cleaned it up because if I put grease in there, it'd get all gummed up and stuff. So. Uh, long and short of it, I just kept it uh, as is, and I'm just going to go ahead and slide this over as we kind of start putting it back together, and it should just snap in place if you push it real hard. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put all these back in real quick. All right, so here we are. 
This uh, blue-gray paint looks really good. And we've gotten rid of most of the rust. And the red looks really sharp. Uh, it looks like this needs to, needs to adjust another quarter inch or so. Uh, it's possible the lid needs to go up, but I'll fix that in a second. Um, but yeah, so far looking really sharp. I'll be back with the other three drawers as soon as I get to them. Uh, but otherwise, you know, she cleaned up, uh, she cleans up okay. All right, so as far as the handles go, I painted these the same color as the drawer uh, pulls, so they should match. Uh, so, and uh, you watched me clean up the nuts that hold it in place, so hopefully I'll just make it a little bit cleaner overall. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Just a tad loose so I can get the other two in. Alright, it is put back together. Now I have to admit I made a couple mistakes here, but take a look at it in all its resplendence. I put it on my uh, stool here so you can get a full view of all the way around. Redid the hardware here, just kind of knocked all the little uh, little bits of rust that were on there. Repainted the, the latch there, the handle. Took down all the rust that was on the back. Painted in this blue color. I think so. I think I did pretty good. Restored it back to pretty darn close. Now, okay, I have to admit, um, you know, the drawers. Oh, shoot, I got to open the, the thing here uh, to be able to unlock it. But uh, what I do want to point out here is that. Um, oh, shoot. I want to point out that I did not do the insides of the drawers while I did, uh, you know, wipe them down and stuff. I do have to remember that this is going to be a toolbox, okay? So this is, this is meant to be used and it's meant to be kind of beaten up a little bit. So didn't redo the insides. I did do the, re the, the tops of the drawers to make them look nice. Redid the you know, this edging, so I took the edging off, you saw me do that, took this uh, badge off and redid it and painted it all aluminum, some aluminum uh, engine enamel I had just laying around, but I left the inside pretty much intact because it's a toolbox, it's meant to be used, but that doesn't mean the outside can't look good, and I thought this blue paint that you see this kind of dimpling pattern to it, it's called hammer tone, I think uh, worked out darn well. So. Anyway, I'm pretty proud of it, and I, uh, hopefully my son will appreciate it when he gets to the age of needing uh, a space to put all of his tools. Right now he's got like a couple wrenches and things, nothing major, but uh, when he gets older, hopefully this will serve him well. This is an antique and uh, vintage, uh, stays in the family, and uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe down at the, uh, the old bottom. Quick should mention though that I did the bottom too of the box so that uh, when it's sitting down, I maybe even put a, put a uh, little piece of rubber on the bottom might help. But uh, just FYI, I did do the bottom too, so don't write me angry letters. I don't know, man. I think it's going to look pretty good here next to the other toolbox now. Yeah, I got to do some cleanup.